And for as much as I have always loved Mary, and for as much as I have prayed to Mary so often in my life since a little youngster, that night in the Northern Chapel of the Sisters of the Holy Spirit, gazing upon our Lord of the Blessed Sacrament and being able to read the power of His Word, Mary became for me a teacher as she is for every single person of faith, for all of you who are here tonight, to mark the eve of the great celebration of the feast of the remission of Mary and her assumption into heaven. Because you see, my sisters and brothers, not only in that moment of the Annunciation to Mary, and not only in her visit to her cousin Elizabeth, and not only in that experience of giving birth to Christ, and not only in her fleeing to Egypt with her husband Joseph, and not only in her presenting Jesus in the temple, and not only in her frantic search for her teenage son, and not only at that wedding feast of Cana, and not only on that lonely road to Calvary where her eyes caught those of her son, and not only when she stood underneath that cross of Calvary, and not only when she cradled him in her arms, and not only when she was with the apostles in that upper room when the Spirit came down upon them in Pentecost, but at every single waking moment of her life, Mary came to understand what it meant to embrace God's will. So that when her final moment of breath on this earth happened, she went to the place where you and I all hope to go. To be with the Father, her Son, and the Holy Spirit in God's kingdom, and yes, together with our mother and our teacher, Mary. What becomes so important about every feast of Mary, but especially this one, in which we recall what happened to Mary at the end of her earthly life, was in fact the beginning of her heavenly life. And in each of those moments of our lives, through the questions and struggles that we have in our lives as did Mary at the Annunciation, to those experiences in our lives when we're called to give birth to Christ by our words and by our deeds. In those moments of life when we're called to be of support to each other as sisters and brothers of Mary was to Elizabeth. In those moments in which, like Mary, we need to flee the evil of the devil by going closer to her son. In those moments when we come to present ourselves to the temple every time we come to pray. In those moments when we, in fact, are in search of the truth, the wisdom who is in fact Jesus, in those moments when we are called to remind each other, go and do whatever he tells you, in those moments when we walk with Christ and our sister and brother who carry heavy crosses, in those moments when we stand beneath the cross of Jesus and cradle him in our arms, and especially as we wait for in our lives, Mary becomes for us the teacher. And we must and can rejoice that she is in fact not only the queen of earth, but the queen of heaven. And where she in fact has gone, we hope to fall. Yes, my sisters and brothers in Christ, and daughters and sons, of our dear Mother Mary, you like myself may well remember this night a moment in your life when God shook the very foundation of who you are and where you were, much as God did the same to Mary at that moment of the Annunciation. In that moment, and in all the others of our lives, may we ever rejoice 
that we can so identify with a wonderful mother who through the journeys of her life teach us what it means to embrace Christ and what a consolation it is for us to know that where she in fact has arrived and remains forever is a place where she in her mother's heart hopes to see one day you 